guess what? I got a haircut. So I've been wanting a haircut for the longest time and I knew exactly what I wanted. I had photos, I wanted it like around shoulder length and this is my problem. I always get confused when they wet my hair. It's like I don't, I just lose complete, complete understanding of how my hair is. And what it looks like. And it's always a wild card. It just becomes unrecognizable. And I never know how much is short enough. And now I have a bob. I got the haircut as a child and I was scarred for life and I promised myself I would never get it again. Yet It's like the planets circle the sun or the moon or whatever they circle. And just the universe makes it happen all the time. I have, I have like, call me coconut, call me coconut. Slap a beanie on me and give me a skateboard. And I look like a teenage boy. Like if some some teenage boys did some crimes and they threw me in the lineup, you wouldn't even question it. I'm just upset because I know better. I should have told Daisy, enough is enough. It's like George Washington came back from the dead. Because my hair curls like that. I knew when my hairdresser said I looked like a child, that was it. It was all wrong. And she asked me, are you sure? Are you sure you want to go that short? Because she had the perfect length. And I said, you know what? Honestly, in my mind, I was like, I'll be upset if it's too long and I have to pay again. To get it cut. Or ask somebody in my family to cut it. And then it's bootlegged. So I said. You know just. I guess I'd rather have it shorter than longer. And have to pay for it. That was my mentality. And I said yeah you only live once. You know cut a little bit shorter. That should be fine. And I showed her a picture. But I thought we were on the same page. But it's not It's not her fault. I take complete accountability for this I asked for it I told her this is what I wanted I wish I could blame her I wish I could blame the universe but all I have to blame is myself I just know when she was cutting it and she kept going shorter and shorter and I was looking in the mirror and I was welling up I was welling up and I in that moment I realized that's when I fucked up My eyes were all glossy and I was going to cry on the spot. I was going to lie and tell her, hey, Daisy, I have a an allergic reaction. I just need a moment. And the worst part is, is that she told me when she got short hair, she went too short. And as soon as she got home, she cried. I said, that's not going to be me. That's not going to be me because I've been here and done this already. And it was me. It was me. So. I look like I'm going to write the modern day declaration of independence. With my quill pen. I literally look like I reverted back. To 12 year old Mary. And when she said I was cute. I look like a child. I was like man. I was going for hot. I was going for hot. And I apparently missed that bus. just went wrong just went all wrong and just for a point of reference my hair was down to my lower back and now it's like above my ears and the worst part is when I come home the man that the local man that cuts the local grass in the neighborhood is around and he cuts our grass as well and he does a great job 
But one time my mom wasn't home and he knocks on our door and we don't have a doorbell or um, it doesn't really matter. Actually, I don't know why I mentioned that, but we don't have like a camera or anything and we don't have a peephole. So I have to literally look at people through the glass of the window and they know I'm there already. So I sort of kind of have to let them in, even if they look sketchy. Not let them in, but I've, I sort of kind of have to open it because now they see me, even if I'm a little nervous and I don't know who the person is. So that's always like, what's that game? It's like hide and seek, but really dangerous. And there could be bad, really bad circumstances. There could be really bad consequences to that. So back to what I was saying, the local grass man was in my, in the neighborhood. And we have a little bit of a history... Um, not like I dated him. Um, he's old. And he's something else, this man. Let me tell you. So my mother wasn't home one time. And he knocks on the door. And he's the local grass man. So I wasn't scared. So I was like, oh, let me go speak to this guy. And he was like, do you want me home? And I was like, no. And he was like, do you single? And I was like, mm, yes, but I'm not looking. You know, I should just be dishonest and just be like, no. But I'm always like, yes. And then it always prompts a lot more questions. And he was like, do you got a boyfriend? And I said, no. And he was like, do you got a girlfriend? And I was like, no. And then he was like, do you gay mama? Do you gay? And I'm like, no. I should have never opened the door. And I love gay people. There's nothing to do with being gay or lesbian but just that I'm being badgered by the local grass man about my sexuality. I just don't enjoy the questioning from a random man. Like, who is this man? And I think that was the end of the conversation. Oh, no. And then, he, of course, he asked, do you, want me to, do you want me to cut the grass? And I was like, no, you're going to have to discuss that with my mother. Because our grass wasn't like we usually cut our grass when it's like it looks like a jungle. And it was like midway. It was like, you know, like I'm going fishing or something. That's how high the grass was. So he was outside. And he was cutting local grass, not our grass, a few lawns over. And I was preparing myself. I was preparing myself for the comment. Because I was already not in a good mood. Because I didn't know... Like, I was going in to... Not the hair shop. The barber... Uh, not the barber shop either. The friggin' great clips. I was going in there with, you know, this idea of me coming out like celebrity status with the hair that I wanted. And I came back with the Oompa Loompa cut. So I wasn't in a good mood. And he was out there. And he was eyeing me. And my hair was teetering dangerously close to lesbian haircut territory because lesbians are notorious for short hair and he saw me but I think he I think he knew I fucked up I think he knew I fucked up I knew I fucked up but I think he knew I fucked up that I was not happy with the length of the haircut so whatever comment he was going to say he chose not to because he looked at me Like he just saw a car accident. By accident. He didn't want to see the car accident and it just happened right in front of him. And that was the energy I was giving out. So good thing he didn't say anything because I would have either screamed or cried. Or both. As soon as I got home I ate like 35 smidgens and then I felt better. But it was great. Like I had fun with it. I was just a little upset because it wasn't when I expected. I really wanted it a little bit longer and I was excited because my birthday's coming up. So I just, I wanted it to be the certain length, but honestly, maybe secretly deep down, I wanted it this short because I would never ask for this. And now that it's this short, it'll grow out and I feel like a free woman. I feel like a brand new Mary. I'm out there with a whole different set of confidence, a whole new set of confidence, not a different set. A whole new set of confidence. And I'm out there living my best life with my short hair. It's like I rolled up off a beach somewhere. And 
the best part is I, I put up a rant on Instagram and it was like a little sad because that's when I just got it done. But then I realized like I don't mind it. And I really actually like how short hair fits with my face structure or whatever people say. Um, that it like fits my face really well. Because when I have long hair, it just sort of kind of looks dead in the middle and just like... So this actually, you know, when I straighten it, ooh-wee. Like, who is that girl? Who's that lady? Sexy lady. Who's that lady? So, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just, I'm just not on it today. The vocals, I didn't do my exercises. So, what was I talking about? Um, oh, so I did a rant on Instagram and it was so sweet. Like people laughed with me and they said like, that was so funny. That was great. And they loved it. And then some people were actually concerned and messaged me like, girl, don't worry if you style it or you straighten it, you'll be fine. Like you look great. So, you know, I appreciate the love. I appreciate, I appreciate people laughing with me. And I appreciate the people that were like looking out for my well-being and asking about it. That was really sweet. And that really that really warmed my heart. Warmed my heart. Such a such an old person thing to say, but really I just it made my heart smile. If my heart had teeth and lips. So this is this is the kicker here. I get a message from one of those those beauty cult people, the beauty cult that that shall not be named on this podcast. But I got a message from one of those people and they were like, "Oh, girl, all your hair needs is some product." And I cannot believe that I can believe it actually because they want their Mercedes-Benz and they want their trip to Hawaii. So it might be cutthroat to get to that point. But I cannot believe that they saw a downtrodden Mary, a vulnerable Mary, straight off getting a haircut. That was not what I expected. And they saw me sad. And they said, let me take advantage. Let me exploit. Exploit her and manipulate her into either buying hundreds of dollars worth of products when you only want to buy one product or converting me because I feel like I'm there's I'm always trying to be converted by people into joining the team and I don't want to do it but that's how cults work they break you down they get you when you're vulnerable they get you when you're floating in the gutter and they offer you a hand and then they grab both your hands and they tie them behind your back. So I was really floating downstream. And they they were trying to get me. And thank the heavens that I was in a good mind space. Because they break you down. Cults break you down. They find out what's important to you. They strip it away. And then they take your remains. And have control. The next thing you know. I'm over here talking about getting a Mercedes Benz, working 30 hours a week from home, getting discounts, getting trips, having the luxuries of working from home. It's just bad. I already know the script and it's this is what they're doing to me. This is what's happening. It, it, this is how it works and this is how it all begins and I feel like I know too much and I feel like they're they're waiting for the perfect times it's like what if one day I just give in and if I do goodbye to this podcast because I'll probably tr- be trying to climb the ranks and then you won't hear from me I'll be in Hawaii with my Mercedes Benz and that'll be it That'll be it. I'll have the luxury of working from home, so I won't ever have to leave my house. And that's it. And then that's my life. 
But as of right now, I'm okay. But sooner or later, I might just have to succumb. I might just have to succumb. So, keep me in your thoughts. Because this is some... There's there's some stuff happening. There's some stuff happening. And honestly, now is the perfect time. Because nobody will recognize me. Because I have the short hair now. I'm modern day George Washington. And that's when... When you become modern day George Washington. When you change your look. When you do do something different. That's when big change happens. So if you don't... If you don't hear from me. If I'm not putting up a podcast episode... Just know, just know, it's the beauty cult that we shall not name, Scientologist, or Hillary Clinton that has taken me out. Just know. And if you love me, you do your research. If I no longer do it, you do your research and you find out what has happened to me. Because if something happens and people say, oh, you know, this happened to her, don't believe it believe that's one of these, one of these three have done something to me. So I'm letting you know, I'm letting you know now. So you take mental note of this. This is important. This is my life. This is my life. This is my short haired life. And it may be at risk. So now that you know, just, just to look out for my safety, I'm going to start talking about my vacation that I took last week. And I went down to Wildwood, which is in New Jersey. And it started out on a funny note. So we went to the hotel. It was like an Egg Harbor township. I might be making it up, but I know it has the word egg in it. And when we walk in, the concierge is is this woman, maybe in her 30s. And she was looking us up and down and she could not believe that we were walking into her hotel establishment. And as soon as we walk in, she was like, are you guys 21? And we were like, yeah. And I just realized how childish we looked. Like we all had backpacks on and we had like colorful masks on. But it's like they don't like I'm not one of those people. But you don't really have the right to just assume because you know what happens when you assume you make an ass out of you and me. And that's why that word is made that way. But she assumed. And I love it because we were like, no. And then she te- she checked her IDs. She checked my one friend's ID. So I guess she believed us. But the best part is we walk in after we check in. And my one friend that her ID got checked, she's walking in with a panda pillow pet. And she was giving us the looks. She thought we were children. She thought we were actual children. And she was just giving us looks anytime we would come in and out of the hotel. And I would make jokes that she was like in our room. And she found alcohol and she was calling the FBI. If that's a thing. And hiding in our closet and sleeping in our bed. Beds. But what a strange woman. I wonder what her life is. That was quite interesting. Um, I also want to bring up that a thing that I do is that when I'm at hotels, I don't go under the covers because if freaky shit's going to happen, if things are going to go down, it's going to happen under the covers or at least it does in the movies. So that's how you get herpes or jerpies if it's Spanish. And I don't do that. Like, COVID's enough for me to worry about. So the last thing I need is the jerps. So, jerpies. So, I don't. I sleep on top of the covers. There may there may be some cigarette burns in there. But I think I have less chance of catching an STD if I lay on top of the covers. If you watch the movies, you know what I'm talking about. You know it. Don't tell me you don't. And with Hillary Clinton, like, every time I bring the dog out in the backyard, if it's foggy out, I'm scared because I'm just waiting for her friggin' pantsuit to slowly become visible through the fog and her be in my backyard. Scary, scary woman. So the first activity that we did was kayaking. 
and we got it on Groupon and we went to this place and it was run by children literally like 15 13 12 year old looked like it looked like to me run by children so that was f- very sketch attached to begin with and so we went to go put on our vests for kayaking which is when you sit in the boats and you paddle with two people or one person and we went by the vest and I, there was an odd smell like burger king like the back of a burger king and those were the vests, so those children are not watching those washing those vests, that's for sure. So I was with my friend, and it was two of us in the kayak. And kayaking is really fun, but this was dangerous because these kids that ran the place were just like, all right, you know, it's easy, and pushed us out into the water and didn't tell us anything, like safety procedures where not to go, where to go, or how to paddle. So I was with my friend who went kayaking once. And we were both, like, like she knew what she was doing, but you both really have to be on the same page for it to go in the right way, to go in the right direction. And we were paddling, and we were going real fast because we were paddling. And they have a whole bunch of yachts parked in this body of water and we're going so fast that it's too late to make a turn and we're headed right for somebody's parked yacht and then we both start screaming and then you hear dunk we literally bounce off somebody's yacht and we're like screaming like "Ah, ah," the whole time as we do it like low like not like not screaming screaming but like a panicky kind of scream like that like you know if uh you know, a ch- uh, a child, you know, if they think they see a ghost kind of thing, like, uh, uh, like whimpering kind of, it was terrifying. So we're very, we're very lucky that nobody came out because we crashed right into their yacht. And that was the first thing that happened. And then our other two friends that are in kayaks, not in our kayak, but in another kayak, they're headed right for somebody's yacht that people are on was parked. But they go right, they're going right for it. All you hear is, don't. And the best part is that the lady's like, oh, it's okay. It must happen all the time. Or maybe she was just very nice. But she was like, oh, no, it's okay. Just like push yourself off. It's fine. And my friend decides to push herself off the yacht with the oar or the paddle. And she's like, no, 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 no. The lady who, who owns the boat, no, 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 not, not with the oar, not with the paddle, with the, not with the paddle, with your hands, with your hands. And that was hilarious to watch. And it was right by like the restaurants on the water. So people were watching and laughing. And then me and my other friend also crashed into this wooden like fence. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like friggin uh, Cleveland when he's uh, falling in the bathtub. No, 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 no. So that's what was happening, and that's what I did, and people were laughing. And it's all fun and games until this next scenario happened. So that was a precursor to what was to come. And me and my friend, we were going back, because there was like, you can go through like a bridge area and then back, and we were by the bridge area. And I was trying to take pictures, and we were talking. And, like, we weren't really paying attention. And next thing you know, we're headed straight for land. And if you if you get on land, you're, like, stuck there. And there's no way I'm going to be able to reach the teens, the preteens that are running the place, if I'm on land. So, we were headed right for land. So, we started freaking out and we started paddling as fast as we could in any direction to get away from the land. And then there's these wooden poles... That connect to the bridge and has a bunch of barnacles on it. And like that didn't freak me out. But then we were going right towards it full speed. And all you hear is, don't. So we hit it. And I kid you not. Hundreds of cockroaches are moving around the pole like this. It was like the friggin' uh, uh, scallops. Scarabs scallops in indiana jones when they're climbing on the walls of the cave 
That's what it was like. And they looked like they were going to make a hard right, a hard left, a hard straight right onto our boat. And I was already leaning off that boat. I was going to hop right into the water. I'd rather be in that water with my clothes on versus have those cockroaches decide that they want to hang out on our boat with us because I thought they were going to just come and hang out and it was going to be it was already cockroach city so I was terrified and then we were also screaming whimpering again screaming now this time it was louder than (laughs) it was actual screaming and we were just pedaling as fast as we could we were like oh my god oh my god we were both panicking and that was that was a sight I'm a little I'm a little traumatized from that you know, anytime I'm near a wooden pole now, I'm going to be careful because apparently you can't trust a wooden pole. I thought it was just the barnacles. And then these cockroaches came out like they had, they had a football game. They had the, they had the cockroach Super Bowl to attend to. They had a music festival to go to. They had uh, the Queen's adorning in like uh in britain if they do that that was like you know the freaking cockroach version of Meghan markle and prince harry were getting married and all these 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 british cockroaches came out that's what it was like i've never seen such an excited group of cockroaches ever in my life and never that many that's the stuff of nightmares that's fear factor stuff so that was that was one for the books and then and then This is where it gets dicey. If it didn't get dicey enough, this is where it gets dicey. So me and my friends, we see these other people doing this cute thing where they grab each other's kayaks and they sort of kind of float together. So that's what we were doing. We were waiting for our friends to catch up and then we grabbed each other's kayaks and we were floating. And then there's parts of the area where you can't kayak and they have these, they look like the contamination bins, the contamination barrels. And they're like white barrels with like the X's over it, like the no smoking, that that symbol but not the cigarette just the little red the little little cut through red thing the circle and so we're all (laughs) taking videos taking selfies talking about life and all on our phones checking social media and there was a plank with some gulls on it some seagulls and one of my friends are like oh my god like we're like this is my friend who talks like this she was like oh my god we're like really close to the seagulls and none of us like none of us like put two and two together there but we were close to the seagulls and then we're continuing to drift and we've been drifting for like 15 minutes it's it's been some time so we were drifting and then we realized we're not moving and we look and we're way past where those barrels are we are in no man's land we are in the area where we should not be and none of us are moving and I was like what's going on here and then I stick my oar into the water and I pull it out just barely and it's brown And it's like I was pushing through taffy. We were in mud, in shallow water, in mud. And I couldn't even move my oar through the water. Like that's how bad it was getting. And I was like, Mary, just calm down, just calm down. And me and the girl in my kayak were like, oh my god, oh my god, what's going on? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So as we're trying and we can't really move. Because the oars are getting stuck, I thought I was going to do damage to the oar because my nightmare is having to pay extra for, for the oar. You know, I paid like $12 to get on this Groupon. The last thing I want to do is pay over $300 for one of those oars. So me and my friend are pushing and it's so scary. It's like if cement was drying and you're trying to like walk through it, that's what it felt like. And we sort of kind of, we were lucky where we were able to like get ourselves you know, where the current was in the water and it pushed us out of the area until we were able to paddle. And then my other friends, they were like, oh my God, oh my God, because they're like, oars were getting stuck. And 
they were they were panicking like my one friend she was starting to do the motions like she was starting to move her hands and stuff like that and um they were perspirating and it was just like if dr phil was out doing a show at a water park that's what it looked like so I told him just calm down even though I wasn't calm and nobody was calm I would try to calm everybody and I was like okay guys just like pedal on top of the water pedal on top of the water because you know you could lose your oar and they were paddling on top of the water until they were able to like get away from the land that we were like really close to being on like we were getting there two more seconds and we would have been on there and the teens wouldn't probably wouldn't have even came for us they probably would have closed up shop and we would have been stranded. So they were pedaling the top of the water and we finally got out. But that was terrifying. Never decide you want to take videos and selfies and go on social media while ki- while you're kayaking, please. Because you drift and next thing you know, you're in another country pretty much. So that was terrifying. And my other friends were flipping out. They almost fell off their, their kayak and I was sort of kind of like laughing and crying all at the same time I'm like we were having a precious time and I wish those seagulls would have squawked or something squawked and got her got our attention so we were able to see what was going on five more seconds it would have been too late we would have been in the looked like an oil refinery over there so God was with us God was with us for that and the whole cockroach scenario because everything could have ended really badly and then later that day we went to the beach and we see something in the water and first I think it's a coconut and I start laughing and then it looked like a person's head and then I almost started crying and then I was about to run as fast as I could like in Baywatch but not but not like as good looking maybe um and I was running I was gonna run to the lifeguard and tell them I think something something awful has happened because you know when you see something say something you got to do what the commercial says and I thought I thought that's that was somebody's head and we got a better look and it looked like some kind of rock or something but it wasn't somebody's head but I was uh, also laughing and crying at the same time and then it was going to be just crying so that was fun that was that was an interesting thing that happened there wildwood's a doo-wop town that's where a lot of the doo-wop culture was they have a lot of the original buildings from the 50s and stuff and chubby checkers chubby checker chubby checkers chubby checkers checkers the food place chubby checkers and um um chuck berry were mainstays there so that was really cool because I love music so that was it was really cool to see some of the places that they performed and it, it looks the same so I love getting that flashback you don't get to see stuff you know people like to destroy things that are old so it was cool seeing that and really just feeling like you were part of that time and the history there I love the do-up architecture that was amazing um, I almost lost my bottoms in the waves again. There was one time it was completely down to my ankles. I pulled them up. So that was scary because I think I would have just, I think I would have just had to walk towards the waves instead of back to the shore if that would have happened. You know, that was what they did in the 1920s. They would just walk into the ocean and that was it. Not the 1920s, like the 1800s. It's before anything really existed. So that's a sad fact for you, but I don't make the rules. I just play by them. So, and then, uh, it's, Wildwood's like a mostly, it's like a mostly white area. So I went with, um, my two Asian friends and my black friend. And my Asian friends got a lot of attention, especially my one Asian friend. Um, I like it's like a lot of people never seen an Asian in their life down there because my Asian friend was eating a corn dog with ketchup and mustard and then a kid was like oh my god look she's eating the corn dog with ketchup and then the whole family in unison turned around and watched her eat the corn dog so that was 
that was actually really funny, but I didn't want to laugh because she was offended by that. She did not like that. Um, some kid was wearing a Virginity Rocks sweatshirt. I thought that was notable. We also went to an ice cream spot and my friend wanted to pick up trash that was on one of the tables because it's disrespectful. Don't leave it for other people. And if the wind blows, that next thing you know, a turtle's dead. And and the and the, the pollution goes up five percent. Like there's just no reason to be a tool bag, you know? So my friend was doing a nice thing and she took the trash and as she was doing it there was a bunch of white children little white girls and they were just watching her it was fantastic and I don't I don't think they ever saw an Asian girl in her in their lives and she dropped this was the best part she was doing doing an awesome thing and it was like a movie you know it's like she was like stand up and do something do the right thing because other people were sitting there and then they moved away from it because there was trash on the table and she picked it up and she was going to put it in and it was going to be glorious and righteous and it was an awesome thing and you were going to like see the friggin' like graphic of you know you know um like oh yeah in the background like in the movies and stuff like that and she dropped it instead of putting it in the trash she actually dropped it before it got to the trash and everyone was staring at her everyone like they literally watched her walk from the table to the trash, to the trash again, and all the way back to her vehicle. So, that that was also a spectacle. Pretty funny. And my friend decided to blast WAP. That song by Cardi B and Meg The Stallion. Really loud as we passed by. Because also I think that was not like a thing that happens. Because it was like an alternate universe. Like, people were blasting country as we were blasting that. So it was very interesting. And, yes, the WAP song. And if you don't know what that is, that means what ass pussy. That's what it means. I don't want to be vulgar, but, you know... I just, I got to keep you guys informed. That's my job as a podcaster is to keep you all informed. And let you know what's going on. But since there were children, I, you know, wanted, you know, I, I put up the window and then for just, for just like the, the inappropriate parts. And there's pretty much the whole song is inappropriate. But when they say the P word, I, I put the, put the window up, you know, I'm not, I'm not evil. So that was her revenge. So show them where we come from let them know and with that song to be honest with you so this is my opinion on that i believe you know a woman's sexuality should not be shunned or stigmatized which it has become in society like it's so easy for a man to talk about you know uh, his sexuality and like you know using bitches and this and that and just literally songs that are just crazy inappropriate and that's just the norm and when women do it it's like you know I'm happy that that's being destigmatized and you know you can listen to women and they're able to speak their minds and speak their opinion regardless of if people agree with it that they have that platform and I think that that is really great but I just don't person like I like the beat, but I don't I don't like the song. I think it's just really nasty, and I just think it's like not necessary really. But that's just not and that's not like a woman thing at all. Like everybody's free to do what they want. I just personally don't like it, and I don't like men who sing about just like you know the over sexualized lifestyle and. Because that song, when I heard it on the radio, I was like, okay, you know, I don't really understand what's going on. Because it's like, I need it, I need it, I need it, and then I, and then you, and then I, and then I, ooh, ah, okay, yeah, ooh, ah, ah, eh, eh, eh. That's Meg. That was Meg's part. And that's what you hear, so I didn't really know. And I'm not a prude. I mean, my body just dances. It just does. It just does. I can't help it, and it happens. And that's okay. 
But yeah, so I mean, I'm glad that women have the platform. I just personally don't love, you know, like, it, like it's cool to talk about your, your romantic life and all that, but I just don't like the really just like nasty sex in your face, but for your ears, you know? But that's cool, man. I, I dig it. And it's, it's you know, it's it's a hard thing for women to do. So for them to do that and to do it with confidence, I applaud them. It's just, uh, yeah, that's my opinion on it. But don't, don't, you know, if you're going to bless me on the interwebs, you know, you can just talk to me. You can hit me up. So, you know, I'm definitely more for it than against it. It's just not my, just not my style. That's all. That's all. But it's all good in the hood. But I'm not going to lie to you on my podcast. You know, I'm not just going to say I love it because it's popular. I'm not going to do that. I love my favorite part is when the, when, they, when they do the... When they do like the horn, the truck horn noise. That's awesome. And I just wonder though. I just... I wonder... Would it also be that popular of a song if it wasn't Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion? So I just like to think about everything. I just like to think about everything. When it comes to popular culture... So we did that. We blasted them out at the retro ice cream shop. We let them know. Let them know what it is. Oh, I got sun poisoning. So that was fantastic. I thought I got a little touch of the COVID. And I didn't. So I'm lucky for that. But I was shaky. And I thought I was going to pass out. But I didn't. I took a nap. And naps always usually pull me out of the abyss and those few hours of sleep did wonders but I was a tan little biscuit a burnt biscuit a burnt biscuit we went to Taco Bell and there was a man that was being very friendly to us the guy who worked at Taco Bell but then he started flirting with the driver which was one of my Asian friends and I was really enthusing the conversation because I just want to see where it was going to go and we told him we're from Elizabeth which is great because now he knows where we live and he was like we were like oh did you ever go to Elizabeth and then one of my friends was like oh don't and then (laughs) and then um he was like no but the only time I'd go to Elizabeth if I was trying to see a certain someone and I was like "Ooh," you know to the girl in the front I love doing that I love you know making things bigger than it is but no, don't don't come to Elizabeth just to visit us. We don't want it. So the guy at Taco Bell was trying to trying to make some game with my friends, and that was also fun to watch. I got too much enjoyment out of that. We rode bikes, and we rode them by these old time hotels, which was cool. And we were riding bikes, and then I hear a bunch of expletives coming from the back section. There was a bunch of kids on bikes, and they must have been like 15, 16, maybe 14. I don't know. I didn't get a good look. But they were saying really disgusting things, and I thought they were on the phone or talking to their boys or whatever, and my friend was like, mm, that's disgusting, mm, like like saying stuff under her breath, and I was like, hey, are they talking to you? Like, what's going on? But with bikes, you can't really see if somebody's behind you or in front of you, so it's like you're talking to nobody really, and that's what I was doing because so my friend didn't answer me, and then these kids pull up next to me. And they're saying stuff like, hey, you want to ride this penis and stuff like that? And I was like, um, no. First I said no. And then I was giving my brain some time to come up with a with a good, um, I wanted to rip them a new asshole. I really wanted to rip them one. And I had the navigation on and I was like really flustered with the navigation and just like not doing well riding the bike. So that was too much for me to like physically and mentally do at the same time and the one kid was like my name is Richard he was like are you are you recording us and I was like no I had navigation on and he was like my name is Richard Flynn and I live at 121 Smith Street come visit me anytime and I was like no because I also didn't have a comeback like it was it was already it was just too much for me to handle because I'm not a person that argues with people so I think if you argue with people a lot and you're a very confrontational person you know what you're going to do in those situations and I never know because I don't argue with people I don't fight with people when it happens like sometimes I have the fight or flight and I'm like yo yo what's up you know like I have that in me I know I do and it takes time to be brought out but if I'm not prepared I'm not ready it's usually going to be a shit show and it's going to look like a Disney movie gone wrong so 
and I told them because they were they were like saying stuff to me like oh um you know we don't even we don't even want you or whatever anymore like just rude things and I was like wow they rent out scooters to kids now and first of all there we were all riding bikes and they were riding bikes and I don't even know if those were rented and it was just like the worst comeback ever and I love that they were like 14 15 or 16 and literally bullying 25 year olds like they probably thought we were like their age they were bullying 20 25 year old women crazy um and I wish I would have like backflipped off my bike and kicked all of them martial arts style or just did like a did like a thing where I you know like in the movies where they pull their cars to the side and they like cause all the cars to like hit them and then they fly over them like that's what I wanted to do like a little side little side brake you know you know break my bike do do the brakes on my bike right in the middle of where they were going and then they all hit me and then they like fly over me but the best that I did was give a stupid comeback and I didn't even identify the mode of transportation correctly. So, and then we did a boat tour where we would, uh, it was like a dolphin boat tour and then a speedboat tour. Um, and we did uh, the speedboat and I'm selfish. So I wanted the part, the, the part of the seats where I'm sitting closest to the water because I always like the view. You're, you're my favorite view. I like the view from 90 Day Fiance, if you don't know that reference. So I was sitting on the edge, and that's what I get for being selfish. You know, what happens next is very unfortunate, but that's what I get. So we sat in the no-soak zone on purpose, and this guy was revving up the engine, and we were flying. We were going like 60, 70 miles per hour, whatever the limit is, and there's water going everywhere. It's like cascading off the boat and I'm starting to get a little wet and then next thing you know I'm soaking wet and it's like in the sitcoms. I'm sitting there soaking wet and all my friends are dry and I was like are you guys wet? No we're fine and I'm soaking wet like literally pouring salt water from my body. My friends were completely dry. Also it's a it's a political town down there. There's a lot of Trump flags and there's a lot of, um, not as many Bidens, but I saw a little nope sign with a Trump quaff, a quaff of Trump's hair, the little quaff of hair he has. And I just think if anybody has political paraphernalia, like there's so many better things to spend money on, you know, pay for my tuition. They could have bought me breakfast, lunch, and dinner probably with that flag. Because I can eat on the cheap. You know, and if you own political paraphernalia... Ugh. Ugh. Uh, uh, uh. Like, like what Meg... That was what Meg would say. But, you know, yuck. I mean, to each their own, but... I just think for any, any politician, like, m- money could be spent much better places. And it's like... It's become like, you know, that's like a sports team. It's like, yeah, team Democrat, team Republican. It's like, I don't know. It's just not me. I don't care for it. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play today. I don't know how to end that, so I had that song in mind, so I sang it so we can move on. I also washed up on shore. And if I were in cartoon form, I would have two X's on my eyes. You know, a lot of the time when I was in the water, all I could th- think about is brain-eating amoebas. That ter- that terrifies the shit out of me. I saw that once on the news, that amoebas from the water. You know, amoebas sounds like such a cute little name. You know, like they're sweet little things. But they're friggin', they're the friggin' celluloid, whatever the hell they are. Bacteria as bitches that get into your brain and they eat it. So that scares the shit out of me and I try not to think about it, but it's really all I can think about when I go to the beach. So that's great. We almost got hit by some vehicles, me and my friends, when we were riding bikes and we, because when you're on a bike, you have to stop like your traffic and we were waiting 
at this intersection and it's like the cars have to stop for pedestrians pedest, pedestrians uh presbyterians pr- uh, pedestrians but they sort of kind of weren't i don't know if they i don't think they saw us so they weren't really slowing down but me and my friends were like s- trying to go because it's like we assume we have the right away but that's not really smart because you know if they hit us it's, it's a done deal so we were going and then another car slowed down but then didn't and so we were like stopped in the middle of the road and you know that weird thing that happens when you're riding your bike and when you start it it's like you know like when a newborn deer is born and the legs are like wobbly you're like that's how you're starting the bike and we were doing that and cars were sort of kind of stopping and going and almost hit us and I almost crashed into my friend because none of us were able to do it quick enough and I thought that was the end like there was many times on that trip I thought it was the end also what is another interesting point that I wrote in my notes is that I love that British people are urging us all to vote like, you don't even live here. And all you hear is, all you hear is, hey, are you going to, you make sure you vote. Make sure you vote. I got my, I, I voted for the parliament sticker. So make sure that you get yours and you make sure you vote. You know, make sure you vote. You know, like, you're British. You know, just, just stay over there with your accent. Just stay over there. I feel like a lot of British people are just like, do this, do that. You don't even know me. You don't even know where I come from. You don't know my life. You know, I don't know about big men. And I'm not telling you what what monarch to vote for. What friggin... What friggin... Competition to joust in. You know, you should just shove it. Shove it with your... With your crimpets and your tea and worry about that. Worry about it. You know, you're worrying about me and me and who I'm going to vote for. It's just crazy, man. It's crazy, isn't it? In it. In it crazy, isn't it? In it. Damn, that was like a multitude of accents. That was like a Scottish, a boy, a girl. But yeah, I just thought that that was interesting because I just see a lot of like... Some, some of these British people are more concerned about who we're voting for than Americans. So... You know, it's fine to have an opinion. I mean, like, if there were things going on in Britain and, you know, I always have an opinion on everything. And that's good. But I'm not going to be like, uh, annex. Make sure you annex the prince. The prince and the princess. Annex the queen. To uh, Terminate the queen. Terminate the queen 2020. I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to be that, that vibrant. I'm not going to be that vocal about it. Vibrant. Like, I'm a rainbow or something. So, my birthday's coming up. My birthday's September 16th. Virgo season, baby. Virgo moon. A Virgo moon season. Just kidding. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about astrology. I just know that I'm a Virgo to the T. But I don't know. I don't know who I mix with. Who I'm supposed to hate. Because they're not. They're the opposite sign. And the water and the sun don't hit the moon light at the same time so that means that I shouldn't like them or we don't get along or our traits are different because I was born as the the eclipse was going with the stars and they were meeting and as the earth created its when the earth was created the stars didn't reflect off the water in the right way and didn't turn the way that the moon was so me and Aries don't get along or something like that so all I want for my birthday, I wanted to start a GoFundMe, but I think that's selfish to do that. I mean, is it selfish if, if my if my dreams come true, if I smile, if I cry on my birthday? is I think it's worth it. You know, if I'm crying tears of joy, maybe your couple of dollars is worth it. So, if I had one wish, it would be to have Miss Juicy... Miss Josie, baby. And she's the one, she's the girl from Little Women that sings, I don't want to feel my legs. That's her. And I would, I think I would die prematurely if she, if I saw her and she sang that song for me and or we sang it together or she visited me. So if I get enough feedback about a GoFundMe and you guys want to donate $5, you know, if I get 500 people to donate $5, I bet I could get her over here. 
I bet I could finagle something, you know? But I would love to get Miss Juicy. And what's awful is that, you know, just being realistic, I don't think I'll be able to get Miss Juicy, baby. I don't think I'll be able to get her. So my second best choice was to have my sister lather herself in peanut butter and become peanut butter baby. And if you don't know what peanut butter baby is, it's a baby that was completely covered in peanut butter and it goes <laughs> it does that the baby so that's what i wanted my sister to do is completely lather herself in peanut butter and make those noises but she said absolutely no and shut up so i don't think that that's gonna happen so if you guys yeah let me know if that gofundme thing would be like a real thing and if not tell me what would be some cool birthday things to want because apparently my my wants and needs are too unrealistic for everyone and anyone in my family and everyone I know so let me know I want to hear or if you have a funny thing that happened on your birthday or a horrible thing that happened on your birthday or something that you want for your birthday that is seems unrealistic to other people or not cool to other people or not good enough to other people let me know. I want to hear it. Hit the Gmail. Hit my Instagram. Comment on the on um, Spotify. You can't comment on Spotify. You comment on Apple Podcast. And do it. Do it. I'm I'm watching. I'm lurking. I'm lurking in the background. I'm like your your little Amazon Echo man. Always on. Always listening. So, boom! I just dropped that on you. So, see. So so really, you know, taking what I'm saying there. So, well, I love you guys. If you stuck out this whole, stuck out through this whole podcast, stuck it out for me, I appreciate it because this has been my longest episode yet. And it's been really fun because I've just been speaking straight up nonsense, just straight up nonsense. So if you are here right now, I appreciate you. I love you. I hope you have a great week and I appreciate it. Peace and love always. Bye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the Kool-Aid man at parties when he busts through the concrete wall. So I'll leave that for you. Uh, Bye-bye. Also how Italians hang up the phone. But I'm going to stop now, for real. Goodbye. Goodbye. Farewell. Goodbye. Farewell. I don't know the rest of that song. But for real. I know you want to keep hearing me talk about nonsense but i'm gonna go now i'm gonna head out